a disturbing story coming in out of Africa, in the Malawi area. These people have been plagued by vampires. Let's look. Hello and welcome to episode 6 of All Cultures Are Beautiful. This time we're taking a trip to the landlocked African nation of Malawi. Malawi is a beautiful country with fantastic scenery, exotic animals, and a friendly, helpful population. But unfortunately for the Malawians, they have been persistently under attack by vampires. In September 2017, vampires were suspected to have invaded the southern border town of Malange. After 15 years of peace, once again there are rumours of vampires who are collecting human blood in some districts of the country for political reasons. And naturally, locals are unable to sleep for fear of having their blood sucked during the night. So there was only one thing to do. Find out just who is colluding with the vampires and give them some Malawian justice. Some tourists were killed by residents, suspected to be colluding with vampires to collect human blood. A police spokesman said, We are reminding people that rumours about bloodsuckers have been there since time immemorial, but no case has ever been proven. And good on the local villagers, who insist that the police are just hiding the truth, as many people in the district are not sleeping, which is presumably not connected to all the drumming and shouting that they do during the night to frighten the vampires away. Because of the vampire attacks on Malawian villagers, the US Embassy in Malawi issued a security message for US citizens. Please review your personal security plans, remain aware of your surroundings, including local events, and monitor local news stations for updates. Maintain a high level of vigilance and take appropriate steps to enhance your personal security. Despite the US warning about vampire bloodsuckers invading the country, the Malawian police chief remained in denial and said that people should reject rumours of bloodsuckers, saying currently nobody has died for being sucked of blood here in Malange. Some people have just created the story to breed fear among communities. We would like to assure residents of Malange that they are protected and that police investigations are underway to find the root cause of such and to get to the bottom of the matter. The district commissioner for Malange said, The rumours have brought a devastating effect on people since residences have always been anxious about strangers in some areas and that they were sleeping outside of their homes for fear of having their blood sucked. A spokesperson for the United Nations said, Well, that's what they would say, isn't it? And referred to a Human Rights Watch investigation that demonstrated that Malawi had been overrun by a vampire elite. And short of sending garlic and crosses, nothing further could be done. The next day, in the neighbouring district of Famombe, two ambulances that were thought to have been carrying the bloodsuckers were smashed up by concerned citizens. One of the ambulances belonged to Melange and was coming from the capital to drop off a suspected vampire. Despite the vigilance and extrajudicial killings conducted by the local villagers, no vampires have yet been discovered. An investigation by Malawi News discovered that the locals had failed to catch the vampires because the vampires were using magical powers, mm. magical shape-shifting powers, which turned them into cats or dogs before disappearing. It was also revealed that these weren't just any old world vampires that used their teeth to suck people's blood. These were actually super advanced Wakandan vampires that used some kind of technology which involved the initial spraying of chemical or some electric powers to weaken the target before sucking <coughs> the blood. And the blood sucking is alleged to be done using some remotely controlled gadgets. The locals described the blood-sucking process as being complicated, saying one can be sucked from a distance through the window or roof. Really? Three strangers were burnt to death after the locals found them, with a bag containing slings, benzene, gloves, and other sharp metals, which are believed to be part of the sucking equipment. They're killing Etar doctors. said, The blood-suckers are real. They've been to my house. They sprayed their weakening chemical, but we noticed it earlier and managed to escape. My eyes were hurting and I ran out of breath. It's alleged that the vampires are from Mozambique, 
and they can't be arrested because they're using strong magical charms. Mm. Many villagers came forward to give their accounts of having their blood sucked by the fully automated luxury space vampires. One single mother said, I felt a needle getting into my forehead's flesh. The rest of my body was numb. I struggled to touch my forehead. I felt a hot, sharp injection like metal. I alerted my brother, who was also in the same room. The thing was quickly removed. Everything happened so fast. Another single mother said mm. that an attacker had entered her home and sucked her blood in the Theolo district. This is not hearsay, she told a fascinated crowd in her village in the country south. I know my blood was sucked. I saw light on the corner of my roof. I failed to stand up from my bed and I felt something piercing my left arm. Given the apparently medical nature of the vampire attacks, it's no wonder that doctors have been identified as the most likely people in Malawi yep. to be vampires. They're killing Groups doctors. Of concerned citizens have enacted revenge on the vampire doctors, who are easily identified because they are carrying stethoscopes with which to suck blood. Their thralls, otherwise known as medics, have also been robbed and had their vehicles smashed, and ambulances have been attacked as their victims were taken to the hospital. The Society of Medical Vampires in Malawi said a case of mass hysteria was sweeping the south of their country that has led thousands of people to believe that there are doctors in their midst. They claim that no health worker can suck blood with a stethoscope, with another vampire adding that there is no evidence that they are really vampires, despite the fact that they all carry stethoscopes. By the 3rd of October 2017, it had all become too much for the citizens of Malawi. Groups of concerned citizens had killed six people suspected of trying to obtain and drink human blood as part of magic rituals since mid-September. A police spokesman and notorious vampire denialist said, There is no evidence about the bloodsuckers. We blame local communities for taking the law into their own hands, adding that local people targeted victims because they were believed to be seeking blood for spiritual rituals. There is no evidence of blood sucking, and nobody has come to the police to complain. The Malawian government was forced to intervene and claimed that there were no vampires in Malange. It was just a ploy. A ploy meant to tarnish the image of the Democratic Progressive Party by those who do not wish the government well. The prevailing vampire paranoia situation in Malange and the surrounding areas has the potential to derail our efforts in promoting our country as a tourist destination, but also preferred destination for foreign and direct investment. Well, this means I'll true, say it fails to explain how the vampire doctors are sucking people's blood with their stethoscopes. Because after <laughs> right. all, if there were no vampires in Malawi, why would the UN pull their staff from the country? As the UN Department on Safety and Security states, these districts have been severely affected by the ongoing stories of bloodsucking and possible existence of vampires. And if the Malawi government wasn't controlled by vampires, why would they impose a curfew because the vampires are being killed? The curfew restricted movement to 10 hours per day, from 7 a.m. until 5 p.m. local time, exactly the daylight hours in which vampires cannot operate, leaving the vampires free to operate at night with impunity. The UN even identified the source of the vampires, saying that they originated from Mozambique and spread across the border to Malawi through the districts of Malange and Falombe. Finally, the president of Malawi said that he was going to crack down on the international vampire conspiracy and the witchcraft that they are performing. President Peter Mutharika warned suspected vampires to stop terrorizing people and told village chiefs to stamp down on witchcraft. He said, if people are using witchcraft to suck people's blood, I will deal with them and I ask them to stop doing that with immediate effect. After the president That's confirmed that there was indeed an epidemic of vampires plaguing Malawi, groups of concerned citizens killed two more people, one of which was an epileptic man who was torched. This led to Malawi becoming had a, a veritable police state, as the police arrested 140 members of so-called lynch mobs who were delivering justice to the vampires, with the national police spokesperson telling the BBC that patrols had been stepped up in the areas affected. 
Western media outlets naturally place the blame for all of this on white people. As Vice magazine states, in colonial Zambia in the 1930s, Africans claimed their blood was taken and their bodies left for dead to make cough drops for Europeans. Cough drops. Can you think of a better description for the exploitation of luxuries for white people? In post-colonial East and Central Africa, there were many stories that blood was sold to this or that country in exchange for weapons. There were some who denied that there were any vampires at all in Malawi, claiming that this hysteria was part of a symbolic representation of life. In a paper titled Deconstructing Mediocrity, Vampires, Victims and National Hysteria, John Moanda suggests that to understand the roots of these superstitions, we must look beyond the beliefs themselves to the underlying structural conditions in the areas which they emerge. The roots of the current vampire hysteria lie also in the current state of law and order, moral order and socio-economic conditions in Malawi, and not just, however, ingrained or strong in mere belief of witchcraft. Another vampire denialist at the University of Malawi said the same thing. It's almost a symbolic representation of the life, their blood, their hope, being drawn out of them, being sucked out of them. And nowhere was this better exemplified when a group of concerned citizens attacked BBC journalists really? in Malawi because it was discovered that they were also a part of the international vampire conspiracy. The vampires said, We found that some people were terrified because we were in two vehicles and they started mobilizing themselves. When they came to us, they started confronting us saying that they thought we might be bloodsuckers. In the first place, the discussions with locals were going on very well, but the more people were coming, the situation was becoming worse. They said that a crowd armed with stones and other sharp objects assaulted the crew, confiscated some of their equipment, and damaged one of their two vehicles. Probably lucky Despite they lived the through understandable it. and ongoing concerns with vampire activity in Malawi, it seems like the residents have things fully under control. So when you think about booking your next holiday to a tropical foreign land, consider Malawi. The vampire problem isn't as bad as it seems. Like, share, and subscribe, people. And uh, that's just a warning for you. There are deluded people in this world and stuff, and... Uh, it shows you, you know, that primitive people have odd beliefs and uh, it's getting a lot of tourists killed and doctors killed in their homeland. And the reason UN pulled out is because they have doctors there. And sure, they're taking blood and doing things and testing people. And next thing you know, somebody had a red cough drop and they freaked out, I guess. I don't know. Anyhow, <laughs> enjoy. More to come soon. Peace.